Saidia Hartman is a renowned scholar of African-American literature and cultural history who has dedicated her career to examining the lingering effects of slavery on modern U.S. society. Across three books and numerous essays, Saidia has stitched together lost narratives of black lives, creating works that are powerful, provocative, and often deeply personal. Through critical fabulation, a combination of history and imagination, Saidia resurrects the stories of unknown, dispossessed, exploited, and disposable black Americans whose voices were omitted from conventional archive materials. For her earlier volumes, Scenes of Subjection and Lose Your Mother, Saidia mined journal entries, legal documents, and other primary sources to illuminate the realities of enslaved Africans, both on the trade route and in 19th century America. Her latest book, Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, shines light on the aspirations and intimacies of young black women in New York and Philadelphia during the social upheaval of the early 1900s. A professor of English and comparative literature at Columbia University, Saidia has been a Guggenheim Fellow, a MacArthur Fellow, and the winner of a National Book Critics Circle Award. And now we too recognize Saidia for her important contributions to American studies. Saidia, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the power vested in me by the Board of Managers of Swarthmore College and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I have the honor to bestow upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. I know this is a long awaited day and a bittersweet one. A virtual graduation is an experience akin to remote nuptials, especially because this moment is not a celebration of your achievement alone, but a celebration of the journey you have completed with your classmates, a journey guided by your professors and supported by your families. So congratulations. Looking into my device recording this, I feel the joy of this day and the sadness that I can't see you or shake your hands or look into your faces and wonder what might they do. I won't offer platitudes about being your best self or utter the word resilience or encourage you to take the world by storm or anticipate your achievement and success because the global pandemic has revealed how threadbare and even impoverished a personal metric of success in dire times like ours. I am a historical thinker, so I feel ill-prepared and unequipped to say what this global crisis will produce, how it will change the ways that we live and work, how we make community and coexist. I don't know what its lasting psychic impact might be, or even who I will be when I re-enter the world. All I know is that the world will change and that it must change. The environmental and climate crisis, part and parcel of our emergent age of pandemics, and the fatal cost of the division between the global North and South, and in the US, the gulf between the minority who own everything, including the earth itself, and the rest of us have been laid bare. The consequences of resource extraction, brutal accumulation, state violence, and the vertical hierarchy of life have never been more apparent or its consequences more deadly. How many have we seen murdered how many more names will we be forced to call in the streets? It has been a hard year for all of us, although even our suffering and loss has been determined by the prevailing social distributions of death, by the monopoly on the good life, by the division between those protected from the pandemic and the comfort of private homes and the essential and disposable sent out into the world 
to serve and to save the rest of us. Amidst the devastation and death of this year, I am embarrassed to admit that many good things have happened for me. I have received awards and recognition, including this honorary degree. I have attended international book festivals and literary galas and delivered distinguished lectures, all from the same table in my great room. A book event in Scotland, a conversation at a theater festival in Germany, a gathering with thinkers and writers in South Africa, all took place against the backdrop of the dirty dishes in my kitchen sink, the disorder of my study, and my door barricaded so that my daughter would not burst into the room or my dog start barking. It all seemed so weightless and unreal. The virtual is bereft of the solidity of gathering, assembly, ritual, and ceremony. And against the grand canvas of planetary existence, my achievements were small. I say all of this just to say, this is a bittersweet day, but this accomplishment, your accomplishment, is real, and it is still a milestone and when you remember this day decades from now, you will be reminded of this global crisis, that our lives are entangled with one another, and that how we might live on earth is still an open question, and that none of us are safe unless all of us are safe. Thank you.